For more on some of these intriguing NHL storylines, here's our NHL analyst, Frankie Corrado. So, Frankie, as a former Maple Leaf, do you think Leafs training camp will be a circus if there are no answers here on Austin Matthews and William Nylander, or is all of that stuff just outside noise? It would be more outside noise. It's not going to be a circus, and because the first day of training camp, if the contracts are not done, basically this is how the media availability is going to go down. Uh, my agent and the team are working on getting things done. I love being a Toronto Maple Leaf, and that's the last time I'm going to comment on it. I'm here to play hockey. Something along those lines. And then that puts out all the fires. But, you know, once we get into the regular season, if we start getting two or three months down the road and contracts aren't done, that's probably the time where you start asking the questions and saying, okay, like, what gives? We just went through a whole summer, and you didn't announce it day one of training camp, which would have been a perfect time to announce it. So, so why isn't it done yet? But as far as the first day of training camp goes, that's exactly how that script goes for the players. And then no one really talks about it because if you're a reporter and you're in the dressing room, like the player has asked you, not going to comment on it anymore. Like that's, we're leaving it at that. So um, there, there's plenty of storylines on the ice for the Maple Leafs come training camp time. That is going to be the biggest one because it is such a big moment for the club as far as getting two star players locked up. But if it's not done, it's not going to be a circus because of the way the players are going to handle it in the first media availability. Now, in the past, you've said that you'd keep Nylander regardless of a new deal or not. Has your opinion changed at all as camp is drawing nearer and nearer? No, my opinion hasn't changed at all. I would still keep Nylander and play the season. And you know what? If you get to the point in the season where you feel like an extension gets closer for one reason or another, maybe the player doesn't love the production that season, or maybe things go really, really well for the player, and the player thinks, you know what? I don't want to go anywhere else. So, like, there, there's a lot of different scenarios that could play out. But if you're the Leafs, you're thinking, we're in win now mode. We've changed the complexion of how things look up front. Why not like give us every opportunity to try and, and go for it here? And, and having William Nylander in your lineup makes you a better player than if you're going to try and trade him. It just becomes complex after. What are you looking for? Is there someone willing to make a lateral move with you to bring in Nylander without a, a contract extension attached to it? Like, are you going to bring back pieces that have term attached that you think you know you want to keep in the long term there's just so many different questions when it comes to that at the end of the day you're going to make your your final offer to Nylander at some point throughout this process and he's going to decide if it's too low or if it's just right and if it's too low so be it you're going to get 9.5 million dollars in cap space if that's the most that you thought you were going to pay that player let's say um and, and then you'll move on from there and say okay are we going to bring in one player? Are we going to bring in two players? A lot of very good unrestricted free agents this year. And as we've seen with many general managers around the league, cap space seems to be priority number one. Let's stick in the Atlantic Division where the Boston Bruins just lost Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci to retirement, so they obviously lose a ton down the middle. Well, there are a couple of centers on Canadian teams that have been the subject of rumors throughout the summer. So, Frankie, let's play matchmaker. Who would be the better fit for the Bruins? Mark Scheifele? or Elias Lindholm? Elias Lindholm, for me, just look at the way the Boston Bruins have built the center ice position over the years, and they've been very fortunate that they've had Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci, but it's two players that very responsible defensively and almost at times have, have given up, you know, certain amounts of offense to make that team very good and produce when it mattered most in the playoffs, downstretch runs. And when I look at both of those players, while Mark Scheifele might provide a little more upside offensively, and he's been uh, more of an offensive dynamo throughout his career, Elias Lindholm has really come into his own as, as one of the better two-way centermen in the league. You know, a guy who can get you 80 points, but also plays a really strong game on the other side of the ice. And it, it seems like it would fit what Boston has had going, the kind of culture that they've built on the ice. And so I, I look at a situation where if Elias Lindholm is the guy that they try and get, and you put him between Brad Marchand and David Pasternak, there's no replacing Patrice Bergeron. But in this kind of era of the NHL that we're in, that seems like it would be as close as it gets. So for me, it's Elias Lindholm. 
Mark Scheifele, just not as quite rounded out as Elias Lindholm is when it comes to being a complete player. Well, you touched on Scheifele. Let's focus on the Jets, who have several lingering question marks heading into the year. What's your level of concern on the Connor Hellebuck and Mark Scheifele storylines just overtaking Jets training camp? Listen, you can be concerned if you want to, but there are just certain things that are out of your control. They're out of your control as a player at times, and they're out of your control as a general manager, as a coach, as a fan. And this is one of those things where it's two players that have spent their whole career in Winnipeg that have done a nice job and, and established themselves as very good players in the league, but they've earned this right to unrestricted free agency. And now Winnipeg find themselves in a situation where they moved on from Pierre-Luc Dubois and done a really nice job of, of the return and bringing in young players that are cost controlled and, and they'll have some, some certainty as far as what their contracts are going to look like in, in the future. Now, I, I would want to see the season play out for Winnipeg and say, okay, like, what direction are things going to go in? I look at a team like Nashville last year that were on the cusp of the playoffs and it seemed like they were sellers at the deadline and they almost got better because of it. It's very hard to emulate that. But if, if Winnipeg gets down this road and the asking prices for Shifley and Hellebuck and the market is there, I don't see why you, you, you would do anything now. You would wait to see how desperate teams get closer to the trade deadline and start saying, OK, that shiny new toy, that young player that you have that fits what um, Ayafalo and Velarde are going to be in my team. I want that guy because I'm building something for the future. So I think time will tell um, how concerned Winnipeg Jets fans would be. But as we sit here in August, there's some hockey that needs to be played. Yes, it's still August, but training camp's only opening in about a month from now. Hard to believe. Thanks for this, Frankie.